What's up? This is uh, Tark here from SmartBikeTrainers.com. So, it's been two years since Wahoo announced a Kicker Smart Bike. I have been using this bike on and off for the past year and a half or so, and I'm going to give you my thoughts, what I like, what I do not like, what changed since I reviewed the bike, and should you wait for the next version, or is this bike still worth getting? The Kicker bike is meant for cyclists and triathletes who want to replicate the rear road bike indoors with smart functionalities such as connectivity to third-party cycling apps, erg mode, and gradient simulation. Well, let's talk about what changed first. Wahoo released a bunch of firmware updates since their release as part of enhancement bug fixes, uh, but the main release was the addition of steering and it is supported by Zwift. To steer, all you need to do is pair the Wahoo Kicker as a steering device in the pairing menu in Zwift. The two bonds inside the handlebar act as your steering wheel if you press on the left button, your avatar will turn left. If you press on the right button, your, you'll guess that your avatar will go right. The next update was the support for Bluetooth FTMS, something you probably didn't notice or cared much for, but worth noting here because Wahoo has been running its own Bluetooth protocols, and these Bluetooth protocols are basically what allow the bike and cycling apps to interact with each other and give you all the different features such as erg mode, slope mode, etc. So by supporting Bluetooth FTMS, app developer's job became much easier because they only need to write one code to support all different bikes and trainers rather than a separate code for Wahoo and another one for other trainers. Other than that, everything else is the same. And speaking of things that are the same, I'm still going to ask you to do me a quick favor and hit that like button below. It helps the video and the channel quite a bit and I truly appreciate it. And another thing that did not change since the release of this bike is the price. The Kicker Smart Bike retails for 3,500 US dollar, which puts it at the higher end of smart bike trainers in the market. The Kicker Bike has one main feature that sets it apart from everyone else and that is the climb, which is basically tilting the whole bike to simulate gradient changes not just by providing resistance changes to simulate inclines, but physically raising and lowering the bike to simulate changes in gradients, ascents up to 20% and descents as steep as minus 15%, and that number can change slightly based on your bike fit. Wahoo also designed the kicker bike to look and feel like a real road bike rather than a stationary bike that you see at gyms or even other smart bikes like the Tax Neo bike, for example. There are advantages and disadvantages to that. So there is no tray, for example, to hold a tablet or your phone or a display screen to show metrics such as power, speed, or anything like that. The only display you'll see is right below the top tube and it shows you your gearing combination and bike tilt angle also other things such as connection status and there is a button on the side to lock and unlock the tilting feature and uh, that's about it. Right below that you will see two USB ports for charging your phone or tablet. The flywheel on this bike is 13 pounds per specs and also is powered by a motor to give it more power and better overall road feel uh, particularly on descents. Okay let's talk about bike geometry and fitting. The bike has different adjustment points to fit riders that are anywhere between 5 feet to 6 foot and 4 inches tall and has a 250 pounds maximum rider's weight. The kicker bike has a 6 point fitting adjustment, stand over height, saddle height, sit back, reach, stack height, and crank length. A quick release lever makes it easy to make adjustments to the bike and that brings us to the fitting. Wahoo went a step further with fitting by giving you the option to enter your measurement into the app and telling you exactly the adjustment you need to make to replicate your bike fitting. So if you have a professional bike fitting done using some of the fitting tools out there, all you need to do is enter your measurement in the app and it will give you all the adjustment points you need to make. What if you don't have a professional fitting done? No problem. Wahoo thought of that too. You can take a picture of your bike place a few pins and measure between the hubs, or you can just use your height, inseam, and position on the bike, and the app will give you all the adjustments that you need to make. The bike also has virtual shifting, and you can customize the shifters to match the shifters on your own road bike or try out different type of shifters. All gearing can also be done and customized in the app as well. 
you can also change the braking to match braking on your bike so if you want to put the front brake on the right and the left brake on the or the back brake on the left you can do that not that it matters because there is no physical brake on this bike but apparently in some countries do braking differently than the way it's done in the US, which somehow I did not know. The brake stops the flywheel, but there is no support for them in any app, but they are there in case an app decides to take advantage of them in the future. Also, I imagine it's there for safety reasons as well in case you suddenly need to stop the flywheel. You can also create different profiles and save them. So if someone else in your household use your bike and change the fit, you can easily go back to the app and pull out your measurement. So overall, I think Wow has done a tremendous job with all the in-app customization available and they are all well executed, easy to follow and explained well. The shifters on the bike look like traditional shifters that you find on road bike and work just like in real road bikes. Very smooth and quick, uh, you should feel a little feedback as you shift through gears. The bike comes with a saddle and the saddle is adjustable. If you do not like the saddle, you can remove it altogether and use your own. The buttons on the left handlebar controls the climb functionality and pressing them will tilt the bike up and down. The bike has a really good road feel, uh, very smooth. The pedal stroke is smooth and did not feel glitchy at all. Uh, you'll find it to be much smoother than your real bike on a direct drive trainer and that's because of all the integrated gearing and shifting and the lack of drivetrain. Also the bike does have a little side to side tilting so it's not totally rigid like other indoor bikes and you might also feel a little fore aft movement. Personally I'm not a fan of that movement but it is normal and necessary tolerance for the climb tilting feature available in this bike. So the bike measure power and I put a lot of miles on this bike. The power measurement has always been good and very close to my power meters is just good. You'll see a little discrepancy here and there, particularly on recovery sets where the kicker reads a few watts lower than my pedal, but overall it was just really good. And by the way, this bike does not require calibration. Uh, I will link to my original post if you want to look at the data, but I'm not going to bore you here with all that information other than it's pretty good. In erg mode, the bike is smooth and response to interval changes pretty quickly and generally within a watt or two in either direction from my target interval. I constantly saw three to four seconds ramp up to target power if I keep my cadence consistent. If you have quick short sprint intervals, you should be able to quickly ramp up to power by increasing your cadence. The bike also measured cadence and it was spot on and nothing really to talk about here. As for noise, the bike has a unique sound to it, but overall it's pretty quiet. Okay, the kicker bike is a really solid and advanced smart bike that is full of features and will make riding indoors a lot more enjoyable. It is accurate does not require calibration and it is not loud. The Waho Fitness app is so well done and makes it easy to replicate your bike fit, create different profiles with different shifting. The traditional bike design, the tilting to simulate gradient changes make it feel like a real bike. However, I get that Waho wanted to make it look and feel like a road bike, but it's a stationary bike and you can get away with having different things on a stationary bike that you just can't take on the road with you like a tray for example to hold your phone or a tablet holder also a display to show some metrics if you don't want to use a third-party app also it would be nice to be able to switch between different modes or at least slope and erg mode and set target watts if you want to use the bike as a standalone bike without connecting to a third-party app for example you can pair a Wahoo element bike computer and use it to control your bike actually I did a full video on that which I will link to in the description below the other thing I love about this bike is it has multi-Bluetooth support, so you can use it with multiple apps at the same time, something other bikes and trainers do not support. So, two years later, should you wait for the next version or get this bike? I would say, if you need a trainer and looking to get a stationary smart bike, go for it. This is a solid bike. Even if Wahoo comes out tomorrow with a new bike, I guarantee you that it won't be that drastic of an upgrade that you will feel bad getting this bike. So if you have $3,000 burning a hole in your pocket, I mean $3,500, go for it. 
you will love it and it will serve you for many years. Okay, hopefully I covered everything here. If you have any question or comment or if you have the kicker bike, I would love to hear your thoughts and experience. Let's chat in the comment. If you are interested in this bike or any smart trainer, make sure to check out smartbiketrainers.com for up-to-date pricing and deals. I usually keep my eyes on all trainer prices and update the website throughout the year. Okay, that's all I have. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the like button. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.